Little debate over the long-term impact of genetically modified food products on human health and farmer welfare is back in public discourse. This after a subcommittee in the Environment Ministry ruled that GM mustard seeds developed by a group of scientists led by former DU Vice Chancellor Deepak Pentel as being safe for human consumption. But despite the committee nod, the commercial launch is currently on hold and the matter is pending in the Supreme Court. At the heart of the issue is whether genetically modified food products are fit for human consumption. Even though the method of deriving GM mustard seeds has been successfully peer-reviewed, deemed safe for human consumption and it actually gives 30% more yields than non-GM seeds, it has done little to assuage concerns of the anti-GM group. Curiously, and this is, this is the curious bit of the whole debate, the method that is used to derive the genetically modified mustard seeds is largely the same as the one that is used in canola oil, which India actually imports and consumes in abundance. In fact, it is estimated that we import around 350,000 tons of canola oil every year that is worth over $10 billion. Then why is it a problem if we consume genetically modified mustard seeds grown at home? Earlier, I sat down with Deepak Pentel, former Vice Chancellor of DU, who along with a group of scientists have been working on this. Take a look at what he told me. Dr. Pentel, thank you very much, sir, for your time. Uh, so, genetically modified crops has, has it's been a very burning issue. It's been become very, very emotional. I mean, right from the time I think when Atul Bihari Vajpayee in 2002 uh, allowed the commercial cultivation of uh, uh, of genetically modified cotton. Yeah. Why would you? What What's happening, sir? Has it now become such an ideologically polarizing issue that is becoming increasingly difficult to take? you know, to take a more nuanced stand? Well, that, that's something which surprises me also because the technology was ready in 90s sort of time. And a lot of research work was carried out all over the world, particularly in the developed countries, which led to the development of these technologies. Now, we accept this recombinant DNA technology, gene shuffling between organisms, mm -hmm. uh, readily for health purposes and all that. But in agriculture, somehow, you know, there are some mental blocks mm -hmm. uh, towards this technology. And much of it, I think, has come because Europe and countries like Japan did not accept to grow mm -hmm. uh, uh, genetically modified or engineered crops. Mm -hmm. uh, they consumed them. Uh, or the products of those plants, mm -hmm. but they they are not they did not accept to grow them. So, so just far. because they did not choose to grow their own GM uh, uh, crops, suddenly that has sowed the seeds of suspicion in the minds of many in India. See, there are there is our left friends who have been always very weary of transnationals. Mm -hmm. So because the technology are under Beidol Act. Mm -hmm. and very strong patent regimes mm -hmm. was passed on from public sector to the private sector. Mm -hmm. So some people said this will lead to, you know, problems with national food security and all that. That the multinationals uh, will start influencing will, and will through their market so power. Will become so powerful, yeah. yeah. And they have deep pockets, they have global reach. And farmers will become? Uh, hostages, hostage, hostage, hostage hostages, hostages. So that was left. Uh, in right, you know, there are a lot of nativist views mm -hmm. that uh, things should be done as they were done mm -hmm. 500 years back or 2000 years back. Mm -hmm. So there is that romanticism with the past. Mm -hmm. To some extent, in some areas it may be workable, but mm -hmm. in agriculture where population has exploded, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we cannot be cultivating land by 2000 year old techniques. So uh, tell us a little bit also, Dr. Pentel, about, about, about the technology that you brought in. So you brought in incorporated three genes, Barnes, Barster, and Bar. And, and, and the unique thing about mustard flowers is that, is that it has both the male organs and, and the, the female, female organs. Part. You see, if you, like we found, our res research started from this uh, point when we found that Indian mustards, when crossed to East European mustards, the hybrids have more yield. That was the starting point about 25 years back. Now, how to make hybrid seed? You take Indian mustard. It has both male and female part in the flower, mm -hmm. and it self-pollinates. It self-fertilizes. So I want to cross it to East European type. 
So I have to make Indian mustard male sterile. Mm -hmm. Once it is male sterile and female fertile, the only then way you can? it can make seed is if the pollen will come from the other and mm -hmm. bees will take the pollen from this East European to Indian type. And it will set mm -hmm. full seed which I can then give to the farmer. Mm -hmm. But the other catch is that what farmer grows should not be male sterile. So my East European line must contain an antidote to the male sterility mm -hmm. so that the hybrid is fully fertile. So Barney's gene gives male sterility in my Indian mustard. Bar star, when it comes and both are there, mm -hmm. then this Barney's is negated and the hybrid seed is fully fertile so farmer can harvest the full production of the full potential of the hybrid. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and through this process, these hybrid seeds, uh, the committee believes it's 25 to 30 percent gives more yields than then these were the non uh, gm these were crops. the trials which were conducted by the icr institutions mm -hmm. by indep they were all all our biosafety work has been done independent of us and mostly by public sector people uh, public sector institutions now this mm -hmm. is just the beginning imagine mm -hmm. we had this hybrid in 2002 ready mm -hmm. and 25 30% yield increase is not a small matter mm -hmm. but historically Hybrids are about 70% rapeseed in Canada is hybrids. About 90% of rapeseed in Europe is uh, hybrids. Mm -hmm. China about 70-75% is hybrid. Mm -hmm. So the whole globally countries have switched to hybrids. Mm -hmm. Canada through genetic engineering method, others through some different breeding methods. Mm -hmm. But all in all, uh, hybrids have become very prevalent and that has led to increase in yield of rapeseed which is a sister crop of mm -hmm. mustard dramatically. Mm -hmm. Now we should try to capture that revolution in India mm -hmm. and when Canada put their first hybrid in field in 1998, 1996 is Barney's Bar Star technology was deregulated in Canada, 98 first hybrid had only about 13 percent yield increase. Today they have hybrid which are 45% yield increase mm -hmm. over the best varieties. So this is a continuous process of right. improvement. And who knows, in the future it could be even above 45%. It, I, we, should, we, should, we should have the goal of reaching 50% increase over whatever present varietal is that Is that possible with, uh, you know, with, the, with the GM mustard seed? The, the pollination control mechanism will help you in making good hybrid seed, mm -hmm. but you will have to improve the parents. Mm -hmm. okay. Because how much you get in the hybrid also depends upon how improved your parents are. So then say in a nutshell, tell us why is this then so important for India? Because as I understand, uh, Canada, you know, is sort of embraced genetically engineered sort of scientific methods for, uh, you know, for rape hybridization seed. for in grape rape. seeds. Uh, but interestingly, even when we talk about mustard, uh, we understand the same method is also used for, let's say, uh, you know, you know, many of the oil products that India is currently importing. So the fact canola. is, we are anyway canola. In fact, is we are anyway, anyway consuming that yes, in yes. the first place. Yeah, but you know, so one fact that I must tell you, and your viewers should know, that canola oil, which is imported from Canada, oil does not have any proteins in it whether it is going to be mustard oil from GE crop or Canadian rapeseed oil with these three genes, mm -hmm. there will be no protein in the oil because oil is all fat mm -hmm. and fat <laughs> proteins don't get dissolved in fat. Mm -hmm. So it's all fat. So it is it's doubly secure because there is no transgenic protein in the oil anyway. Mm -hmm. In the meal, one of the three proteins, but you know, the meal from rapeseed has been consumed for the last 15 years all over the world mm -hmm. and no animal has been reported to have gone sick eating that meal. Mm -hmm. In fact, their milk production is increasing, if anything. Mm -hmm. So then why this outrage? Because let me at least, you know, take you through at least a few of the sort of concerns that have been raised. Uh, you know, one is that that even though the subcommittee has given it a clearance as far as it's, it's safe for consumption, but they should make the raw data uh, public, okay, on the basis of which they have reached this conclusion. And they've also said that I, and, and even your own research has said that this is absolutely safe. Would you be willing to make your raw data sort of public for? I, I, we don't care either way. 
but the government has a policy the statutory bodies which are rcgm and gac have a policy framework what they should release what they are not going to release and to my belief they are working under some international protocols where intellectual property is also respected because otherwise everything is thrown open so it is their call it's not our call right we have published everything you know we work with public our whole research has been public funded mm -hmm. the bio safety analysis has been done by public institutions mm -hmm. so there is nothing to hide yes yeah, so that's why i'm hide? surprised that you know i mean even though it's a public institution because because we understand there's been as you said there's a lot of concern about transnational corporations but in this case this is a public institution that you know that uh, and, and despite that there have been so much of concern and that questions is, that is why asked. i feel to some extent that these ngos and others ideologues no matter how stringently they oppose and the kind of lies they spread about the technology uh, they will ultimately get defeated because i have faith in human rationality mm -hmm. when the proteins are not toxic when studies have been done in other countries and in india also mm -hmm. a set of experts which are probably one some of our leading experts in toxicology mm -hmm. and allergenicity in these issues they have looked at the data they have put their own report now these experts have put their own report mm -hmm. which is assessment of bio safety in the public domain mm -hmm. why they have reached that conclusion i think it's it's a very very open system and lot of people i have not looked at the comments but lot of people have uh, sent their comments sent their anxieties uh, to these committees and gac will respond and take that those also into consideration when they reach their final conclusion what is the way forward now sir because this matter is far from over i mean even the subcommittee has approved the environment minister very publicly recently said that we have not taken a final decision on this uh there is also a plea that has been filed in the supreme court where they are saying that you know do they so i mean you, see, you know so the, so the fact is i mean you know we are, i mean how i mean we are <laughs> still somewhere off yeah. before this is we we excel in delays mm -hmm. we excel in delays we the country cannot afford that a decision has to be reached either way mm -hmm. because why should we if this very innocuous piece of genetic engineering is not acceptable then what will be so we should not tell our young people to work in the area it's stupid to say keep on working in the area when you are not going to utilize a technology which has been ready since 2002 yeah and 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 other countries have deployed it and the whole world have consumed it we are also consuming it what is the risk of india not accepting adopting uh, uh, the genetically modified mustard seeds and you've also said that this is also going to impact all future uh, sort of you know scientific backwardness in indian agriculture what is will what is at stake low yields you cannot have highly productive agriculture for example these hybrids which we have made the first generation hybrid it does not take any more fertilizer not even a single drop of water more than a variety does mm -hmm. to give 20 to 30% yield increase so it is for free and because it is public funded research the farmer is going to have access to the technology at a very uh, you know low cost mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so if we are not ready to even accept this kind of situation mm -hmm. then maybe one day we will wake up and we will feel that we are so far left behind mm -hmm. that we have no other way but to buy expensive technologies from abroad well we we'll of course have to wait and watch